You're listening to The Air of the Time. I'm Pooh. And I'm William Cooper. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll be in to tuck you in in just a little bit. All right. One hour to be exact. One hour? One hour. That's a lot. <laughs> Seems like it, doesn't it? Yep. Okay. Good night. Good night. See you later. Bye. Don't forget to read me a bedtime story. Okay, I will. Bye. You, you pick one out, okay? All right, bye. Bye. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to uh, some of the music that we play on this broadcast a lot. And uh, you don't always know where it comes from. Well, tonight you're going to meet the man responsible for this.
morning, ladies and gentlemen. If I've got everything hooked up here right, I give you the Aaron Russo. Good evening, Aaron. Are you there? Thank you. That's very, that's very kind of you. I heard that in someone I can't believe it. Put a tear in my eye. <laughs> well, good. Uh, you you uh, you deserve the recognition, I believe. And uh, very sweet. Thank you. You also did trading places. Yes, yes, I did. You also the founder of the Constitution Party. Yes, yes. Which has sort of become uh, inactive and uh, neutralized. After uh, some shenanigans by some people that we won't we won't get into that tonight because we got a lot of other stuff to talk about. A lot of, a lot of very positive things to talk about. Wonderful. I think the Constitution Party will will become very positive again in the future. I really believe that, and right. I think we have a vehicle in place so that when uh, the opportunity strikes, and I think it will soon, it's there to move on. And uh, I certainly know one thing: it's platform. And what it stands for is better than anything else out there in the marketplace. Yep. And uh, what I've done since I resigned from the Constitution Party, you know, is uh, I've put Mad as Hell together. And uh, Mad as Hell is, is just unbelievable. And uh, it's taken off across America. And I feel so confident of Mad as Hell that uh, I just think we're going to, I think, I, I finally have hope that we can actually win. You know, when I was with the Constitution Party, you know, people were always complaining, well, do I have to give up the Republican Party and do I have to stop being a Democrat? And, you know, it was like a political party and people thought of it as a very staid kind of a, a thing. People are always afraid to leave and go to other parties. But Man as Hell is an organization that, uh, we're for, that I formed that people are just signing on. They're not afraid of it. They're signing on by the thousands because... Mad as hell, instead of being a political party, is something we I started to fight totalitarianism. Because that's the real battle we have in America. And if, if we can make everybody in America aware that we're, that we're living in a police state, and that uh, this country and its ideals have been uh, burned and put aside and been shredded, it's like the Constitution has been shredded, and if I can make people across America aware of that by using my skills as a movie producer, uh, then I thought that was the best thing I could do. And once we get millions of people involved in that as hell, then the Constitution Party can pick up where it left off. And uh, that's my plan. Now, when you left, you were going to make a movie and you were going to make a uh, TV series. Right. What happened to those two projects? Well, the, mo the movie, I, I had a movie I was working on called Dangerous Precedent which got uh, the IRS and the 16th Amendment, and nobody would make the movie. I mean, I tried very hard to get that movie done, and nobody would make it. And in the process of making the TV show, uh, I went ahead and uh, I had very extensive negotiations, actually, with the Walt Disney Company. And uh, they wanted the show, but we could never agree. I, and I said to them, listen, guys, you know, if I'm fighting the federal government, I don't want to be a slave to them. I'm not going to become a slave to the Walt Disney Company. So uh, so what happened was I went ahead and financed it myself. I paid for the thing. I, made, I, shot, I shot the show. And it's evolved into this amazing video called Aaron Russo's Mad as Hell. And it's 90 minutes long. And if I do say so, and I say this modestly, it's really brilliant. It's wonderful. <laughs> I mean, I, it's, the best, it's the best thing I've ever done in my life because it's better than trading places or the roads or anything I've ever done because it's about something really important. The content is just uh, wonderful. It's educating people to what's going on in America. Uh, being a Jewish guy, uh, people know I'm not anti-Semitic, you know, which is a big plus. And being a very successful movie producer and winning Emmys and Tonys and Academy Award nominations, they know that uh, I'm not some, you know, they can't call me some wild radical out of the Idaho or Montana hills. And, uh, and so because I made this, um, people uh, who know Ammo are watching the show. And they're quite really, my God, here, and I had no idea this was going on in America. I had no idea. And we're selling thousands and thousands of these videos. And uh, what I've done is, Actually, uh, just a few days ago, I finished shooting an infomercial, which is going to be on television all over America. And that, that infomercial is going to explain to Americans what's happening in this country. And then from the infomercial, they're going to order the uh, video. And I think, I think I see a really bright light at the end of the tunnel. I think I found a way to educate America. 
and to uh, uh, take back our country and to uh, stop the hemorrhaging that's going on. You know, the Man to Tell is actually a three-pronged a three uh, prong plan. Uh, the first plan is to get the video out to everybody I can so we can educate people, and even people who are knowledgeable, who see the video, love it, it's funny, will cry during it, they get enraged, uh, and they show it to other people who, are, who aren't knowledgeable. And because of my background and who I am, which helps a lot, a lot to give me credibility, uh, people really view the video as a, a real piece of work and, and, and something that they can trust. And so when they see what, what I'm saying, what the government's doing, uh, I, we convert lots of people. So it's a great tool in that sense. And uh, the second stage of what we're going to do after educating people is to put a tourniquet on the government. You know, if you're bleeding, you put a tourniquet on. And what we're going to do is we're going to stop these laws from being passed. What we're doing is we started what, the, what I call the Mad as Hell Alert Freedom Alert. And what that's doing is uh, we're starting people up and we're going to have 10, 15, 20 million people become a part of this. And we're going to send everybody what I call the Mad as Hell Directory. And the directory is going to be... A uh, directory of every congressman's uh, phone number, fax number, email number, address, everybody in the cabinet. And every time they try to pass some unlawful legislation or some totalitarian legislation, uh, we're going to fax out overnight to 10, 15, 20 million people, letting them know that this, they're trying to, they're going to vote on this bill and they're going to try and pass this. And those 10 to 15, 20 million people are going to go to their directory, pull out the appropriate congressman's phone number, fax number, email number, and we're going to bombard them with millions and millions and millions of faxes. And uh, from people from all walks of life, white, black, Jew, Christian, you know, mad as hell is for everybody. And, and no, one, no one has ever done this before in, in, in massive quantities, you know, and having people that aren't just Christian or just Jewish or just black or just, you know, it's for everybody. It's, it's what America was, was built on, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and the right to be uh, different and still be free. And, uh, and, and once we stop these laws from being passed, the third step is to take all this money. And, and, get, and, and back all the campaigns and put new people into Washington. Get rid of those guys in Washington. So the first two steps of what we're active on now is getting the, the video out there so people can see it and enjoy themselves and educate other people because it's really entertaining. And then the next step is going to be to fax people all over the country. Let them know every time something happens that we don't want to pass, we're going to stop it. We're going to bombard them with protests, peaceful protests. But we're going to stop them from doing what they're doing. And when they get 5, 10, 15, 20 million faxes and emails, uh, they have to pay attention. They can't ignore that. And, uh, and that's the plan. And it's working like gangbusters. I did a, um, I went to Reno the other day. And uh, when I went well, to Reno... Hold, hold on just a minute there. I, sure. I, I get, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Um, number one, you say nobody's ever done that, but then I've, I've got to disagree with that because people have been doing that for many years. No, no, I meant, I meant in, the, in the massive quantities that I'm doing it. And, you know, well, I think they have been. They, I mean, they haven't all been in one organization, but they have done it in massive quantities and not just from one group. Of, I'm uh, aware... I'm uh, aware that uh, when NAFTA went on and when and when and when GATT went on, that that the uh, Washington was swamped with lots and lots of calls and faxes. But what I'm telling you, what's never gone on is that a, a group of people under one roof—white people, black people, Christian people, Jewish people, people from all races—getting together and saying, "We're not going to take this crap anymore, and we're and we're going to we're going to stop you guys and have 10, 15, 20 million faxes." I've never heard that ever happening. And I'm, well, I'm, Go. Hold on. Sure. Um, it, it was everybody with NAFTA and GATT. It wasn't just uh, so-called right wing or, or the angry white male. It was blacks. It was whites. It was Jews. It was well, it was everybody. It was all different religions. Nobody wanted GATT or NAFTA. That was, that was a strictly, I mean, from my point of view, from my, it was a blue-collar uh, thing that the laborers went to and the people who uh, workers fought against, but not the people at the higher echelons. And uh, I think that what, what Man as Hell is doing is getting people rich, poor, students, and we're getting people from everywhere. And, it's, it, and I've never seen this happen before like this. When you see the people that are joining up with us who are saying liberals, conservatives, I mean, uh, when, when, when I explain to liberals what's going on, 
Uh, they say, this can't be happening. I say, it is. And then all of a sudden, they're not so liberal anymore. Yeah, but Aaron, I've heard this before. We did this with the Constitution Party, and it was happening with the Constitution Party. We had liberals, we had right wing, we had blacks, we had Jews, we had whites, we had uh, Native American Indians, we had Orientals, we had all different religions, and at the, and at the slightest sight of, of any opposition or any kind of dissension, it just melted away. No, I, how are you going to prevent that from happening again? I can only tell you that I was, obviously, you know, I started the Constitution Party, and I saw what that was, and I started this, and I see what this is, and it's nothing alike. There's, not, not, there's nothing similar about it in, in the scope, and the, and the kind of response, and the kind of people coming into it. It's just a whole different ballgame. It's, it's much, much uh, greater and diverse, and uh, it's not even close. Maybe because the video is a way to explain to people what's going on, but there's no comparison. From what I mean, I was there for both, and I can tell you that it's just not, it's just not accurate what you're saying. And the man as hell is much, much broader, much, much bigger, and much, much stronger than anything I ever did with the Constitution Party. Now, what do you mean by bigger and stronger? What are you talking about? What I mean by bigger is there are many, many more people joining on, you know, much bigger numbers, and uh, in terms of stronger, the strength of the people joining this thing, like I said, I was going to Reno the other day, and uh, when I went to Reno, it was pandemonium. The excitement, uh, I just never felt that before with the Constitution Party. The Constitution Party was, like, was a version of thing that was just starting, but mad as hell, is like there's a, an excitement. I mean, if you, if you would have been in Reno, the people were like screaming and jumping and cheering. and It was, it was like the Rolling Stones arrived or something. I, can't, I don't know how to explain it except to say I had never experienced anything like it before in my life. And, uh, now, wait a minute. You've produced some of the biggest rock groups in America. You must have seen something like that before in your life. I said, I never experienced it. I didn't say I'd never seen it. Uh oh. I said, I never experienced it for me personally. Oh, you mean personally? Okay. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and that's why I said it reminded me of Mick Jagger and things I'd seen. Uh -huh. I never personally experienced. Yeah. And I certainly never experienced it with the Constitution Party. And uh, what I see happening here is something much, much bigger and much, much greater than the Constitution Party ever was. Uh, and, not, and I, I see the Constitution Party as being a vehicle uh, for potential, uh, when it's time to get the people out of Washington and the, and the first and second phase are complete, I, I'm hopeful that the Constitution Party would be a possible way to uh, help change government. I don't. I think this is the last free election we're going to have in this country, and if we don't do something in this election, it's all over. That's what I believe, based upon all my research and, and all of my study and all the years I've been involved in this. You'd be right. I don't. I certainly wouldn't argue that mm. point with you. I don't have control of that, but I do know that what's happening with with Mad as Hell is happening so fast. And once it hits the airwaves on television, uh, it's going to be in the millions. This is this thing is everybody who sees it, and everybody who hears about it. And they're, they're just signing on in droves. I can't. It's hard to. Explain. I'm going to Las Vegas Monday night to speak, and uh, they they're calling it telling me they're having mass. They expect massive crowds coming. I just you know I just see what's going on. Uh -huh. And uh, well, I, I certainly hope you're right. I've never experienced. I can only tell you this. You know, I've had a pretty good nose. The Constitution Party was always a struggle. You know, and getting it going and getting people cooked on. It was a struggle. You know, uh, this is not. This is like they're just coming on like like flies. Like people just jumping on board. And it's a whole different feeling and attitude and uh, way of, of being looked at. I, I like I said, I never experienced what happened to me in Reno before. And uh, and when I'm here, and when I'm, the corner kind of calls I'm getting, and the amount of calls, and the letters, and the people who are encouraged to see a real plan to win and change things in this country, uh, they're very excited. And, it's gonna, and, and where the Constitution Party never reached out into the mainstream of people, the liberals, and those other people. Oh, no, that's not true, Aaron. Yeah. That, that is not true at all. The Constitution Party was attracting people from all races, all religions, all walks of life, and oh. both sides of the political spectrum. Oh, Bill, you know it was not in quantities like... I'm not talking quantities, but you're saying it didn't happen, and I'm telling you it did. You're saying a few liberals are signing on. That's one thing. But I'm saying I'm talking about something bigger than that. I'm saying... That you're, now, you're talking about numbers. Yeah. So you can't say that this wasn't happening with the Constitution Party, because it was. Not, what I'm saying to you is this is reaching far deeper into the liberal establishment. No, what you're doing is you're just getting more numbers because no, you're not presenting them with a, with a with a uh, thing that they've got to commit to some kind of a political position. I agree with that. Yeah. No, the thing is this, though. There's a video now that they can see. In other words, not just getting a piece of paper. You know, here's the Constitution Party's platform. This is, I made a video that's 90 minutes long 
that it, that's really exciting people. You know, I used all my production skills to make it. And people see it and they get excited. They understand it better than just a, a flat piece of paper. And I'm saying it was reaching far deeper and getting more people involved than I have been, than, you know, I could ever imagine. And I'm telling you, when it hits the television airwaves. Well, I can understand how I could do that without making a political commitment because I was extremely disappointed and very angry when I, when I would discover people uh, who professed to be constitutionists and to uh, be um, uh, firmly committed to supporting and protecting and defending the Constitution for the United States of America, who would not join a political party that had the Constitution for the United States of America as its platform yeah, oh. for a restoration of Republican government in this country. Yeah, I agree with that. And also, when I, when I was involved with the Constitution Party, I kept getting things, you know, from uh, Christian organizations who wouldn't join up because of the sin, and that, because they didn't want to join in with other people. And now I, I find that totally changed. I, I, I'm finding now with what I'm doing that all these Christian organizations are saying, we don't care whether people are Christian or Jew anymore, we just all want to get together and join together to fight the beast. Where before, when the Constitution Party started, that was, I, I found a lot of difficulty and a lot of, a lot of groups w willing to merge together. And I find that that resistance changing and, and, and for the most part uh, those walls have come down and I find people join together much more easily now than I did then and uh, I'm very thankful for it I'm happy for it and maybe it's the result of the video or maybe people have evolved more since then but a, I'm finding a whole different attitude people are saying you know we have the, the beast we're fighting is totalitarianism and a police state and whether you're fighting the land rights battle or the IRS battle or the education battle whatever battle you're fighting that's some of the tentacles but it all falls into totalitarianism Yes. And they all know that if you want to beat totalitarianism, you have to join together. Christians alone can't do it. Jews alone can't do it. Blacks alone can't do it. And it takes all people from all kinds to come here and say, we're going to stand as Americans from all walks of life and tell the, tell the government we're not going to stand for this anymore. And I'm not going to take it anymore. And that's what it takes to win. And people are realizing it and they're getting behind it. And they're saying, enough of this crap, enough of this division, you know, enough of this... Um, divide and conquer, no more of the splintering of groups, we're going to come together, and I see it everywhere I go now, and I'm so encouraged, I mean, it's the one thing that's given me hope, because it's the one thing people are realizing, that if everybody comes together to win, they'll win the big battle, that's the big battle that has to be won. i got another question for you. Sure. You say you're going to send out millions, 10, 20 millions of faxes, who's going to pay for these phone bills? We are. That's How? Because people are going to sign up and join on and pay money to join. And, we, and that's how we pay for it. It's a business. That's how it's going to be done. Okay. Well, it's got to be done. There's no other way. Okay, you understand? I've got to ask all these questions. Oh, of course. <laughs> that's what it's for. That's, I mean, people have to know that it takes money to do this, and that if you're going to send out all these faxes and all these letters and these videos, it takes money. And, and people won't, and it's not that much money. You know, so people want to do it. What kind of money are we talking about? Well, the way we're doing it is going to cost uh, $20 to buy the video. And five dollars a month for the fax and newsletter service. Oh, okay. So they're subscribing to this. Yes, definitely. Okay, okay. Absolutely. Because I knew that as soon as uh, this broadcast was over, somebody would call me and say, "Are you crazy? They can't send out fifteen, twenty million faxes. Who's going to pay for that?" <laughs> of course you can. That, 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 that's good that everybody understands that. Yeah. You know, five dollars a month is nothing. You know, and if you're not willing to spend five dollars a month or a dollar a week to be a free person and everybody to come together, then you're a fool or you're stupid and stop complaining. Go go to sleep and wake up in a police state. Yeah, that's what I've been telling them for years. You know, I mean, it's nothing. It's it's it's, it's ridiculous. And and what makes it work is that millions and millions of us come together to do it. So I mean, for night, well, the way we're doing it is 1995. You get the video, you get the Man Is Hell directory, you get the bumper sticker and a button. You know, for 1995, how much cheaper can you do it? And then for five dollars a month, you get the monthly newsletter and the fax service. And then when you get the and, and every time they try to pass the bill, we fax out these people. They go to the directory and then they fax Washington. They call Washington. I mean, it's it's wonderful. It's a wonderful plan, and and it's a way for millions of people to be heard. It empowers people because we're we millions are going to do it together at the same time, you know. And it's uh, I'm telling you, people are so excited by it. And uh, I, I'm I'm really thrilled. I really see a light here. I really see a way to win. And uh, if we get if we get all these millions of people together, and I and I think it's happening. And the infomercials at the airwaves, and I'm on television across America telling people. And the infomercial, by the way, is great. People are going to be rocked. Or people at home watching this stuff on television are going to be rocked by what they see. And where's that going to be shown? 
In around three weeks, two months, it'll be on the air. Uh, on where? All over television, all over America. Yeah, but on what? Excuse me? Uh, on CBS, ABC, NBC, or all of them, or what? The cable stations, broadcast stations, will be buying time all We're just buying time all over the country. We, we, we pay for the time. Uh -huh. It's not being broadcast for free. It's time that I buy. You understand? I buy the time. I put it on the air. Yeah, I know, Aaron, but people are going to want to know where it's going to be seen because if you got a hundred cable channels on your cable system <laughs> you know and you tell them in three months to watch for this, nobody's going to be sitting there flipping through a hundred channels looking for an infomercial. Excuse me, Bill. you got to tell them where it's at. Bill, excuse me, Bill. I said three weeks, not three months. And the other thing I said to you, I, have, I do not know exactly the station that's going to be on yet. We're in the middle of buying those times now. Okay. You know? So, uh, you know that it's going to be on so much that you, you, if you watch TV, you're not going to miss it. I mean, it may take a little channel surfing at the beginning, <laughs> but it's going to be there, folks, and it's going to be on uh, major stations across America. You know? is, is there going to be a point in time when you will know what channel, what uh, cable systems and what channels it will be on? Absolutely. I'll probably know in about a week and a half. When, when you do that, could you give it to me so I can put that out on the air? No question about it. Okay. No question about it. Easy. That's easy. Great. That's easy. I know we're starting out in 50 cities. I know we have a plan for 50 cities across America, and we're negotiating with the different stations now. So that's uh, that's part of the reason why I don't have the definitives yet, because we're in negotiations trying to buy the time at the most reasonable prices. You know, when you buy time on television, it's not a simple deal. What station are you on? It's not like going on the Bill Cooper show. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like you you, you got to negotiate with 50 different people, 50 different places, and buy time. It's, it's, it's a lot of work, and it's just not quite ready yet. But uh, it will be on in three weeks to a month. You know, we have a tremendous uh, satellite listenership of this broadcast. And for you to be on all of those uh, cable uh, systems across the country, you're probably going to be um, uh, on a satellite. So if you could also let me know what satellite and what transponder, uh, that will be tremendously helpful also. You can do everything. You know, I know secrets. <laughs> it's all there. Just get it, out. Let's get it out there to everybody. Let's just get it out there to everybody. Now, anybody listening... If if you want to get involved, you want you want to sign up, you just write write us at, uh, to uh, Mad as Hell, PO Box two seven seven four zero, Las Vegas Nevada eight nine one two six, and put a check in the mail for twenty bucks, and we'll get the video out to you right away. And with the video, we'll send you a a, 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 a flyer that allows you to sign up for the fax service if you wish, and. Uh, you come join us. I'm telling you something. You're going to be really happy you did. This thing is really big time. And um, I'll give out the uh, address again in a little while, so get a piece of paper and a pencil. And I promise you, from the bottom of my heart, you'll be very, very happy to see the video and to become a part of what we're trying to do here. I promise you that. How many people have already joined, Darren? Uh, let's put it this way. It's in the thousands. And it hasn't even been advertised yet, just word of mouth. Uh, is this people who bought videos or who have actually subscribed to the... Uh, people who have bought videos and subscribed both. And, and, and once it hits the infomercial, once, once the infomercial starts, then it's, it's, it's all going to be part of the same package. Uh -huh. That you can't do one or the other. The reason we can buy the video now is because when I was first trying it out to see if it was going to be successful, I was just selling the video to see if people would like it or not, you know? Uh -huh. I was like field testing it. And so uh, the response has been so huge that this is what's made us uh, realize what we had here. We had a bull by the horns, and uh, and we're going all the way with it. Okay, don't go away. I'm here. We'll be right back, folks, right after this series of stuff we got to do. To myself, what a wonderful world. Out the skies of blue, the clouds white, the bright blessed day, the dark stained night, and I think to myself.
Swiss America Trading. They specialize in non-reportable, non-confiscatable hard assets. And that means, put very simply, real money. Most Americans don't understand that according to the Constitution for the United States of America, no state shall tender in payment of debt anything other than gold or silver coin. Why isn't that being done if the Constitution is actually in force? And according to the law, a dollar is a specific weight and measurement in purity of silver coin and can be expressed in gold coin. And this measurement is known as a dollar. If you look up the meaning of all of the terms that you see on that phony money in your pocket, called a Federal Reserve note, and they're, believe me, folks, <laughs> it's not a... Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is not an agency of the United States government. And uh, it's not a note. And if you really do a little looking up in a law dictionary, you'll find that you're holding in your hand a counterfeit piece of lying, worthless deception. And if you put a $1 Federal Reserve note next to a $100 Federal Reserve note, I defy you to tell me the difference in the value between the two. The difference is only what one fool is willing to accept in comparison to another fool <laughs> who may or may not accept it. And that's the truth. May anger you, may upset you, but nevertheless, it's the truth. And that's what this broadcast is all about. Call Swiss America Trading. Thank them for sponsoring the Hour of the Time. Ask them how you can get your hands on some real money because when all this comes tumbling down, folks, and it will, I don't care what anybody says, it's going to happen. It's gone past the point of no return. If you don't have some real money, you're going to be in big trouble. I still believe, though, in taking responsible steps to try to resolve all of our problems in a responsible, peaceful manner. We must do that. We must practice due diligence. We cannot ever be accused of being irresponsible or being the people who caused it to happen. So call 1-800-289-2646. Talk to the good people there. Ask for Frank if you can get a hold of him. And uh, tell him you'd like to get your hands on some real money. Ask for the free newsletter. Tell him you're a steady listener to the hour of the time. And I guarantee you'll get read carpet treatment. 1-800-289-2646. Do it now. You'll be glad that you did. Hi, everybody. I'm Mark Bell with the Thrills of Youth Protection. We don't only sing, but we dance that it's going to be more. In Houston, we just brought a new dance. First tighten up on the drum. Come on now, drum. What's the tighten up for now? Oh yeah. Tighten up on that bass now. Tighten it up. <laughs> yeah. Now let that get some fun in. Oh yeah. Time to work it all again now. Yeah, 
Well, that's not what I intended to uh, play, but the uh, CD player is really acting up. You punch the button that it's supposed to play, and you hear this loud bang and a pop, and something else plays. Well, Aaron, why don't you tell us uh, uh, tell us about the video? What's what's on the video? Oh, the video is basically it's me on the video, and I do a performance, and I t and I tell people what's happening in America. We have uh, Senator Don Rogers on the video. We have. Uh, Charlie Dukes on the video, Dr. Julian Whitaker talking about cancer cures. We have a whole piece about uh, Donald Scott and what, how he was murdered and how what the government did to Donald Scott. Well, this, this is the video that you sent me? Yeah. Same one. I don't know. If, you might have seen the half I don't know if you had the 90- or the half-hour version. But uh, on the 90-minute version, the one was selling. I, I, I first did a 30-minute promo version, which you may have gotten first. Uh, I don't know if you have the 90 or not, but on the 90 minute version when that's being sold today. I, I gotta tell you right now, I didn't know you had Charlie Duke on there. After what Charlie Duke did to the Constitution Party, I cannot support him in any way. Well, you don't, you certainly don't have to. You know, he's entitled to say his, say his piece and say what he thinks. He may be, but I can't support it. Oh, you don't have to support it. It's just a question of whether he's saying what he wants to say and, uh, having freedom of speech. Well, you know, you have freedom of speech not to support him, and he has freedom of speech to say what he wants to say. But anyway, uh... Well, it's, it's more than that. I mean, he tried to he tried to stop us from having our freedom of speech. Well, and, I, and, uh, and uh, some of the recent things that he's done regarding the Freeman and some of his vilification of those people up there is absolutely despicable. Well, like I say, you know, you, 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 you have that point of view and you're entitled to your point of view, and I'm not going to contest it. You know, I'm not, say, I'm not saying you're wrong or right. That's your point of view. But having Charlie on the show, he said some good things on the show, and uh, Julian Whitaker was on the show, and he said talked about the cancer cure, but also... We had, a, we had a great panel on about asset forfeiture, and uh, we had three of the leading people, Brenda Grantland and Jeffrey Steinborn, and uh, the third girl that I don't remember for, at, the, at the moment, but we had a terrific, uh, what we did was we showed, we showed what happened to Donald Scott to his wife, and, and, and after, after we showed a 12-minute piece of that, then we had a panel talking about what the federal government can do and, and can't do and how to protect yourself. And it was really, uh, it was very, very enlightening. And, um, and then I, I, then I did an awful lot of the show myself. And, uh, what I find, what I find happening today is that, uh, I find liberal, I find that, uh, many liberal people, when they see the show, uh, you know, they're saying to me, my God, Aaron, you know, I had no idea this was really happening in America. Because I back up, I show them the bills that they're passing, I actually put the bills on the screen, and I show them, and, uh, all of a sudden I'm finding, uh, liberals and conservatives, neither one wants to be a slave. And and that's the and that's the battle we're all fighting is slavery, and that and I think when people realize that we're fighting slavery, everybody's wanting to come together to defeat that, and that's why I guess I'm finding such an easier road now, uh, in, in this battle because uh, people are recognizing the fact that nobody wants to be a slave, and the liberals before we were real, you know, people say to me, Aaron, are you getting any support in Hollywood? What do those people out there think? You know. And everybody tends to uh, group people together in their thinking, and I, and I really believe in individuality as opposed to group thinking. I don't like group thinking, and I don't, I think group thinking is not thinking. It's no thinking. And uh, when I sit down with a lot of liberal people and I, I explain what's going on, they're in shock. They're in shock, and they're joining, and they want to stop it just like anybody else wants to stop it. And I and I, I think the question, say, of liberal or conservative, is, is, is totally irrelevant because I don't know what either I don't know what either uh, label means. Anymore. Anymore. I don't know what they stand for. Neither does anybody else. Yeah, exactly. So I think the only question is to ask yourself, are you free or not? That's the question. Is are you free? Not are you a liberal or conservative, but are you free? Yeah. And we're not free anymore. And and that's what's bringing everybody together, because that, that recognition is starting to happen. I mean, the Supreme Court just uh, passed this bill, the other, just, uh, not passed this bill, but rendered a decision the other day saying that if a policeman stops you in your car for any traffic violation, they now have the right to... Uh, Search your car. <laughs> Bet me. <laughs> that won't happen with my car. But it may not happen with your car, but they. And so it's, it's, you know, they made a decision they can, that the, the federal government can now seize the assets of innocent people. Okay? So uh, the, the, you don't have the protection of the courts anymore. No, they've been doing that for a long time. The truth is, the Constitution is not in effect. They are ignoring it, and they can do damn well whatever they please, whenever they please, and they've been doing it for a long time. And, and, and it's getting worse. Yes. That's why, that's why people 
who never thought about these things before, they're beginning to recognize it because it's getting very late in the game and it's becoming a little clearer what's happening to other people. And that's why I'm hoping that this whole man is helping uh, when it takes off. Uh, it's going to bring everybody together in a unification that we've really never quite seen before. And uh, I feel, I feel, uh, you know, I gave, I gave a speech. Uh, United We Stand asked me to come down and talk, so I did. And, um... When I was talking, after they asked me a question, they said, you know, what do you think of Ross Perot? And I said, first of all, I'm a guest here, so I don't really want to say what I think of Ross Perot, but uh, the first thing is I think he was a trailblazer, and he allowed me to see how many people were dissatisfied when I didn't know that was going on in America. But as far as, you know, as, far as what he stands for, and United We Stand, what does United We Stand mean? What does it stand for? I mean, it's United We Stand what? Other than, other than talking about the budget, he never talked about the police state, the totalitarianism, and all those other things that really matter. And uh, and, and he, he doesn't care about the Constitution. No, he said that. He thinks it's an old, outdated document exactly. penned by doddering old men over 200 years ago. It's got to be changed. Exactly. But what, but what he did do was show that millions and millions of people were dissatisfied. So now, if we, if we, if we get these millions and millions of people under a roof that's actually fighting the totalitarianism and fighting the federal government and not being a puppet of the government, as I think Ross Perot was, then we can really be effective when we can win. And I think Manus Hill is going to do that. I think it's going to replace United We Stand in terms of the kind of mass of people and stand for something that's really important, and that's fighting the police state. And that's the main objective. And and, and also, in this way, uh, all these groups, you know, the land rights groups and the IRS groups, the people that are fighting each other, they don't have to give up their own little piece of the world, you know, to join man as hell. They can stay, they're still fighting their own little piece that they're fighting. They have their own tentacle. And uh, people are really responding in just a, a really great way, Bill. I just, it's just been, I've been overwhelmed. I've been really been overwhelmed. Anybody, by the way, anybody listening who lives near, near Las Vegas, on Monday night, I'll be at the Showboat Hotel. It starts at 7 o'clock. They're showing a 90-minute video. It's for free. Please come. I'm going to be there. And after the video plays, I'm going to talk. And we're going to have a really uh, interesting dialogue. And it's going to be fast and frenzied. And uh, come see the video for free. You know, in Las Vegas on Monday night at the Showboat. And we're going to have a big crowd there. And it's going to be a guest. So are, you gonna, are you on the marquee? Am I in the marquee? Yeah. What does that mean? Outside the hotel, the big sign that says who's playing at the showboat? Not that I know of. You ought to make them put your name up there. Well, you know, I'm not, ex I'm not exactly that middle, you know what I mean? I'm Barbara Streisand. Well, yeah. I'm not either, but uh, I had my name on the marquee of the showboat hotel where I spoke so, there. But the showboat the hotel, you know what they did? They gave me the big ballroom for free. They could make a contribution to what we're trying to do. Yeah. And get people to know what's going on. Yeah, I mean, they've been really... Uh, I think they only put your name up, Bill, when, when you charge money to go, so they can make some bucks. You know, but they're doing this for free. They, they, they gave us the borrow for free. We don't charge people to come in. And, uh, tell you the truth, whether my name's up on the marquee, I couldn't really give a damn. So, you know. Uh, all I care about is people show up, people get educated, and that this movement really uh, kicks into high gear. Oh, Aaron, you got to have a picture of your name on the marquee in Las Vegas. I'm going to call them and ask them to put your name on the marquee. Well, I've had it on, <laughs> I've had it on movies. You know, I don't really care much about that anymore, but I've, I've had my, my ego gratified. I'll lighten up, Aaron. I'm just playing with you. I know, and I'll play it back. <laughs> 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 you know, I, but the truth, I've had, I've had out there so who cares anymore about this stuff? Let's win this battle. Let's get off our butts and let's win this thing. You know, that's all that matters because, you know, you, you really could be right about this being the last election. And if that's the case, you know, we, there's so much work to do right now. And there's no time to waste. That's right. So let, let me give that address out to everybody. Please, if you want to buy the video, just to see it, I'm telling you, do it. You're going to be happy you did it. I'm not, like, trying to sell videos. Let me tell you something, guys. Every time I make a motion picture, I get a million dollars. and a million, Or a million and a half dollars. I don't make them anymore because I don't have time. This is all I care about is getting winning this battle. And this has cost me a fortune to do what I'm doing. So it's not about money. I want you to understand that. I want you to buy this video, 20 bucks, uh, send a check to Mad as Hell, P.O. Box 27740, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89126. You'll be really happy you did it. 89126. You know? And uh, there's so much that we have to do, folks. And uh, it's just, uh, I refuse to go down. I refuse to be defeated. You know, I, w I won't let the government do this to my family. 
Uh, this H.R. 1617 is one of the most disgusting pieces of legislation I've ever seen in my life. The Career Planning Act. Have you discussed that on the show much, Bill? Uh, what's that? H.R. 1617, the Career Planning Act. Oh, yeah. We've talked about it. It's disgusting. I mean, yeah. Channeling children into uh, specific uh, uh, careers, whether they want to be that or not, once they're in that track, that's all they're ever going to be. Exactly. Little, little, they want to make them little tax-paying units, you know, yeah. pay, paying the master. Yeah. It's disgusting. And this whole thing about you wear, kids being forced to wear uniforms to fight crime. Yeah. Look at that. It's about indoctrination of the children. Yeah. i got I got to ask you something else. This, this has really bothered me. When we were uh, trying to find a candidate for president, we considered Charlie Duke, and you had some private conversations with him, and then later I did too. And we discovered that his true politics are, are not what uh, what the, the world thinks that they are, and so we rejected him as a political candidate. And then he came in as the uh, as the uh, the uh, the. Uh, Chairman of the uh, of the attempt to destroy the the Constitution Party. Why in the world do you have him on your video? Sure, I'm very happy to tell you. First of all, uh, my conversation with Charlie Duke that you're referring to, him and I had a major disagreement about um, education. He thought education at the time was something the government should be involved in, and I, I, I explained to him that it wasn't. We had a major battle. And later on, he capitulated in that stance, and he said I was right, and that he was wrong, and that uh, and he apologized. This and as far not apologize, he just said that he he, he copied the Constitution, not giving the federal government any say in the education. And his own personal take on it was was that the federal government should. So that's what I related to you, and that, and that was one of the reasons why we didn't want to get get him involved. But later on, when you're talking about about uh, becoming chairman of this trying to take over the party. I wasn't there for that. I had already gone. So I don't know all the details of what happened then. I wasn't really a part of it. I wasn't this parent. Well, in the next issue of Veritas, it's going to be the headline, frontline story. We're going to expose Charlie Duke for what he's been doing and what he's done to, uh, to those freemen up there in Montana, what he did to the Constitution Party and what his true politics are. But they, what, they, what happened with the freemen? What, what happened up there? Tell me what happened. Oh, he went up there to try to uh, negotiate and ended up uh, uh, as a propaganda organ to justify the FBI is doing whatever they want to those people. Oh, me when he said that they have to feel some pain. Oh, he said they have to feel some pain. He said that they better get those girls out of there because the freemen are liable to sell them to the highest bidder. And uh, uh, just made statements that are just absolutely the most despicable things, the same things that they did to the Branch Davidians in Waco. He was doing uh, with absolutely no uh, prior allegations of any of those things ever having been made by anybody or any proof uh, of, of any of what he was saying to vilify the character of those poor people who were in that situation. Uh -huh. Well, I I I totally understand how you feel about that. I was uh, I heard him say about they had to feel some pain, but that obviously happened much after I did my video. Yeah, he he said a lot more than that. Believe me. Uh -huh. Well, you know, but I mean, I certainly think that what he said about education, a person is entitled to grow and learn and change their mind. So I, I don't hold. I don't hold anything against them for that, personally. No, I do. It's socialism. It's against the Constitution. It's wrong. It's not the politics that he's telling people. You no, know, at one time I might have said the same thing. That doesn't mean you hold against me forever. I learn. You people change. They grow. He hasn't changed. Well, I don't know. That, that, that I don't know. But say people do change. They grow. People go through. Life is a process that we go through. I'm not the same as now that I was when I was 18. Yeah. Maybe Charlie had to learn something. You know, I don't... Uh, I don't put him down for that. I think that he has a right to feel what he felt and learn from it. And I felt like he was big enough to learn that uh, he was wrong. I think Charlie's committed political suicide. And if there's any way to help him do that, I'm going to do it. Well, that's your, that's your, <laughs> that's your choice. Yeah. I, I, that's why, that's it's not, why just, I it's not just my choice. The, the, the statements that he made about the Freeman, what he did to the Constitution Party, has, has uh, cut him off from, uh, I would say, the majority of all of the people in this country who consider themselves to be part of the patriot uh, movement. I understand how you feel. I, do. I really do. I know how you feel about it. Uh, but, you know, there, there is, uh, there's a lot to be said. He's done, he's done some good work with the, con with the convention, convention of States. You know, he did a lot of good work in that front, and he should be admired for what he did there. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot to say on both sides of the coin. I mean, he really broke his back trying to do that. I went to Sacramento with him, and with him and Don Roche to stop that from passing in Sacramento, and we did. And Charlie was a big part of helping of helping that. 
So, you know, you take the good with the bad, you know. You, you just, everybody's not perfect. Everybody can be. No, you don't have to be perfect, but you got to be an American. And he has, he has screwed himself in my book. And uh, he's not going to get away with it. That's, that's your call. <laughs> you better believe it. And, I, and my call carries a lot of weight. i got to tell you that. I certainly believe that, too. <laughs> I certainly do. You know, and... Uh, there's, there's, there's just there's, there's so much to do, you know. I, I there's no there's, rather than t I feel like rather than taking time to uh, have venom towards people, we're better off trying to fight and get a positive attitude going and trying to bring people together. The Charlie Duke. It has nothing to do with venom, Aaron. It, when, whenever somebody gets exposed for what they are, somebody comes up and says, "Oh, why can't we all play together?" You know, like Rodney King. That's that's <laughs> bullshit. I got to tell you that right now. It's absolute crap exposing people in this movement for what they really are uh, and, and instead of what they pretend to be is exactly what has to be done. You see all this 10th resolution, 10th amendment resolution stuff that Charlie Duke started and was going across the country had a lot of people pigeonholed chasing their tails around in little cul-de-sacs for nothing. If the government, if the federal government will not obey the real 10th amendment which is a part of the supreme law of the land, they're not going to listen to some 10th amendment resolution that's passed by a state that means nothing, has no teeth in the law and has no consequence if they ignore it. Well, it certainly, certainly raised the consciousness of a lot of people. Uh, it, it pigeonholed them doing things and spending money on a cause that is absolutely worthless. If you want to get behind a cause, get behind the Council on Domestic Relations and Jackie Petru and Dan Druck, who are really putting teeth into the Tenth Amendment, and they're passing, they're getting resolutions passed in states that says that if the federal government does not obey the Tenth Amendment and the other uh, parts of the Constitution, uh, then, the, then the states are going to disenfranchise them. And, and that's got the force of law. So, you know, that's what people should be. Uh, they should be involved in something that actually accomplishes something and doesn't just uh, uh, make some statement, you know, blowing in the wind. Well, I think, I think that's what I like about America. We're all entitled to have our own opinion, though. You know, I, I think Charlie did a damn good job in what he was doing. I really do. I, you know what? I'm hearing a, 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 I'm hearing stuff from you I never heard before, and, 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 and it just it doesn't sit well with me. What are you hearing you never heard before? Well, you know, you started the Constitution Party and got that going, then you left the Constitution Party. Charlie Duke and some some of his buddies came in and tried to destroy the Constitution Party. Pretty, they did a pretty good job of it. Well, you can say that all you want, but you know damn well that I called you and told you exactly what was happening and sent you faxes of all the, the stuff. Yes. And so don't tell me you don't know what was happening. You do. Now you've got him in your video. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Don't put words in my mouth. I never said I didn't know what was happening. What happened? I said I wasn't a part of what happened, and I only knew it peripherally from what you had told me. You don't have to be a part of it. Oh, you do. I never spoke to Karen. I was never involved in the inner workings, what was going on after I left with that. And the fact that you have a phone to pick with Charlie Duke, that's between you and Charlie Duke. It's got nothing to do with me. I like Charlie Duke. I think he's a decent guy. Aaron, it does have something. It has a lot to do with you. The whole thing started when they made accusations that you stole money from the Constitution Party. So don't pull this crap with me. Stop pulling who the hell do you think you are? Well, because I don't agree with you doesn't mean I think of anything. You can't force stuff down my throat because I think Charlie Duke has done an admirable job. He may have screwed up with the Freeman. I don't know exactly what happened, but the man has brought a certain consciousness to people, and I don't resent the guy. I don't dislike the guy, and you can't make me say that I do. And that's why America is a free country. That's not what I'm saying. What are you saying? What are you saying? Because I don't agree with you. No, you said you weren't a part of it. The whole thing started when they accused you of stealing money from the Constitution Party. You remember that? Well, excuse me. You told me that... I, no one ever said that to me. You told me that... Con I sent you the communications from them that made those accusations. I understand. But no one ever said that... No one, had, no one ever accused me of that to my face. And you know that, and I know that. The only thing I ever had was that you said that... You know, Aaron, I'm sorry that I, that I spent all the time defending you over that and, and, and took all the flack that I did and spent all the time trying to keep the party together sorry. when you obviously don't even give a damn. You're sorry that you defended me because I, was, because I did the truth? You're sorry that you defended the truth? Is that what you're saying? You're telling me that it that, that doesn't me. mean anything because nobody accused you to your face. If you're sorry you defended the truth, then nobody should get behind you. No, that's not what it's about. You just said you're sorry you defended, you know. No, that's not what I said, Eric. I'll do what you said. No. Come no. On. What I said is I'm, I'm extremely disappointed come on, come in on. you. Oh, don't, you know, you do, don't be a bully. Good night, Eric. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, I can't get behind this. It sounds like Aaron's doing the same thing again, and as soon as the money starts coming in and all that kind of stuff, sounds to me like he's going to bail out just like he bailed out on the Constitution Party. I can't get behind it. He's the one that uncovered, to me, Charlie Duke's real politics. When the Constitution Party began to get strong, Sharon Ford, Karen Scarborough, and Charlie Duke mounted an attempt to destroy the Constitution Party, and they did a pretty good job of it. And it began by accusing Aaron Russo of stealing funds. I spent my own money to make an audit of all of the books of the Constitution Party. I defended Aaron Russo. I took all the flack and all the blame for everything that was happening because he had bailed out, and then they began to accuse me. And now Aaron wants to start some other thing and get all people into it if you buy a videotape. Sorry, folks. Sounds like the same old routine to me. And it really makes me angry. He sent me a video and said, this is the video we're selling. I watched it. Charlie Duke was not on that video. And if he had been, we wouldn't have done this broadcast tonight. Now he's telling me that what they're selling is a videotape with Charlie Duke on there, somebody that Aaron Russo could not have endorsed before when he was the chairman of the Constitution Party. And so, folks, cut me out of it. I'm sorry that I had him on as a guest tonight. I'm sorry that I subjected you to all of this. If you want to join that, and if you want to send him $20, go right ahead. And if you want to send $5 a month, go right ahead with that, too. But I can't approve of it, can't get behind it. I think there was a little deception in getting on the air tonight. I think Aaron Russo knows exactly what I feel about Charlie Duke. And maybe that's why he sent me the videotape that did not have Charlie Duke on it. I am extremely angry right now. Good night. I hope you can all sort this out. And God bless you all. Uh -huh.